welcome to the engine markets training session uh meanwhile others are joining in we will start with the session so today's talk, topic so within homes and analysis uh, we're going to discuss about you know how do you analyze links for different asset classes several uh, you know categories and then you can uh, even go ahead we will have a q a after the session ask the questions and we will uh, you know address them up i hope i am audible to everyone and so that we can start with this session okay i hope the terminal is visible to everyone uh, if not please let me know on the chat box uh, so that we can uh, you know address it so as you can see this is the engine markets terminal and uh, accordingly uh, you know uh, you can start with the you know if you want to analyze any mf holdings right what you need to do is you need to go to the fund section here and in the fund section you can directly go towards holdings analysis so i hope i hope i'm audible because i've just got a message uh, that uh, there's no you know voice uh, please let me know if i'm audible to everyone uh, and then i can start it up so within holdings analysis uh, okay so within holdings analysis as you can see uh, you have given uh, several tabs one of them is sector changes stock changes equity holdings and the debt holdings so we will explore sectors changes uh, you know all together in this uh, particular session and uh, what we are going to do here is uh, you can actually see the average sector holding changes for the previous month uh, you know accordingly in this particular matrix so this entire data sets this shows you the average sector holdings in banking for all the equity mutual funds so this is not considering hybrid mutual funds if you see, if you want to see for hybrid you need to click on hybrid here so for equity mutual funds this is what the average sector holdings in bankings are and this is the number of funds taken into consideration so these are all the numbers which are taken into consideration for every single month now if you can see here there is a change in the average sector holding from 19.41 to 19.33 that just basically means that there is a you know decrease in the average sector holdings altogether in the banking sector right and you can even change this into value rupees invested in crores to change that all you need to do is click on this now you can see these are value rupees invested in crores for every single sector now if i want to explore one single month with the rupees invested in, cro in crores for any sector all i need to do is just click on one particular you know uh, parameter let's say banking so if i click on this 269274 rupees uh, you know crores rupees you can actually see these are the funds which is you know given here and these are the you know percentage allocation all together in banking so you can click on this you can you know click on any other you know uh, uh, month in here and you can definitely see these are the you know percentages and the amount invested in crores for every single fund so if i want to just check for banking which fund is having the highest amount in crores which is kotak flexi cap right and for the percentage allocation you will see definitely these are the banking you know banking and financial services funds more more towards sectoral so that is how you can take a look towards uh, every single holdings for the sector you can even go for pharmaceuticals let's say which is 90000 crores you can click on it and you can see you know these are the uh, you know funds which hold highly into pharma right so this is one case for all the mutual funds these are all the equity mutual funds taken into consideration now let's say you if you want to look within equity mutual funds within one particular set of category what you can do is you can directly you know click on this uh, particular tab this is just a you know uh, area where you can click and you can just select one single category now let's take a use case a use case here is i want to know all the sector holdings for the flexi caps right average sector holdings for all the flexi caps is 20% in banking 9.38% in it and finance it goes on right and you can even check the value rupees invested in crores just by clicking on it for the flexi cap fund so 
even for the flexi cap if you want to know for refineries what are the you know funds which are highly towards refineries within flexi cap you can directly check that you can click on this and you can see that is this these are the funds which has high highest allocation towards this particular set of the sector right you can even sort it through amount invested in crores that gives you a particular idea about the you know funds which holds uh, refineries as a sector in their uh, you know uh, mutual fund so basically this is what uh, sector holdings is all about you can even scroll down you can see all the sectors here and uh, this actually says you the number of funds taken into consideration now we also have filter holding types you can also filter the holding types from here you can even filter foreign equity you know indian mutual fund if they hold some fofs some you know if you're talking about hybrid funds you would definitely want to add some debt securities here so you know that directly can be added if you just go for hybrids and if i filter the holdings i can easily do that so you can see these are the filtered holdings i've taken into consideration right now for you know hybrid if i've changed the asset class i've only taken into consideration equity portion of it so you can only see the equities of the hybrid so if you want to filter the holdings you can filter it from here you can select as many filters as you want and this is how you can you know do it so every single filter can be selected from here and that gives you an idea whenever you click on this you can easily see for this filter and the you know entire filter set which you have added here in the section so uh, that's how this works out uh, you can uh, you know once you have done this filtering you can just you know onload uh, those funds into this particular set of sectors right so this is what uh, you know the holdings analysis is all about just a second yeah so once i get back uh, you know in the holding analysis uh, filtering after filtering the categories you can even save uh, it in excel so we have given a button here to save it in excel if i take a you know a category called hybrid and with the filter type as equities i can even choose to have one single category like baf balance advantage or equity savings to take a look towards the sector of only equity savings as a fund right and then you can filter the holdings as well once you have filtered the holdings you can download this data set in an excel format so once it is downloaded in excel format you can easily view that particular data set uh with the funds number of funds taken into consideration and all the stuffs in one place so i hope my screen is visible uh i'm just showing the excel uh, screen here and here you can see the filters uh for the those particular sectors uh for this balance advantage category so you know this is this is what you, the data sets gets downloaded in excel uh you can do this for any particular category you can do this for any particular you know uh, uh filtration here in the filter holdings types here so that you can download that data set in excel so we have given entire flexibility for you to download these so that you can you know use this in in a powerpoint or a word report if you want to make a customized report for your you know own analysis this is one sector changes we have given another is the stock changes now the stock changes gives you an idea about insightful information about uh you know the average holding for the stock for from all the mutual funds so these are taking into consideration for large cap stocks only as of now you can change that and you can also you know uh once you uh, filter the asset classes so now we are considering only equity mutual fund for icici bank limited so for that if you see uh you know for 30th september 2022 the average holding for that particular stock is 7.53 right now you can even change that in value rupees invested in crores just like before we have done for sector we are doing it for stock and even for stock you can even click on this and you can see which are the funds holding highly into that stock right so these are the funds you can you can see that in amount in crores and there's another parameter which you can look towards is shares held in lakhs now shares held in lakhs gives you an idea that you know number of shares like for an example if you see this uh, in, in bharat electronics you can see that number of shares was you know 4000 lakhs uh, uh, 4000 lakhs held uh, you know by all the mutual funds then you can see a jump significant jump in shares here so you can definitely you know uh, check that out for every particular set of you know uh, stock here in the system and that's how you know you can actually you know do the ascending and the descending order for every single stock 
for the large cap for the mid cap and even the small cap as well so if you if you want to have some insightful stock ideas right like what are the you know mf uh, mutual funds holding these kind of small cap stocks you can directly go to this you know uh, stock changes and you can see what are the changes in stocks according to the percentage you know average holdings or the number of shares held in lags so you can see the number of shares has been decreased from the last 12 months right and we have also got another set of uh, you know very important parameter when you see this average sector holding you might get an idea of that okay this is the stock which is you know highly uh, you know having a highest average but you need to also look towards show fund counts because if only one fund is holding a 4.75 you know, allocation for this particular set of stock, then that average is not, is a very skewed average. So for that, you need to click on this and now you can efficiently see that only two funds hold such a stock. So you need to take a look towards that, that what is an average and how many stock, how many funds holds, you know, have this stock in their portfolio. So you can see, you know, KSB limited is having, you know, higher number of stock, uh, higher number of, uh, funds which holds this particular stock so this is uh, you know uh, you can actually click on this right and once you click on this you can see uh, you know this particular set of stock uh, with the highest shares uh, you know held so it is nippon india tax saver ELSS fund so it's pretty uh, you know useful to analyze it through uh, you know stock changes you can do that for any particular set of capitalization uh, large cap mid cap and small cap we have given it here and uh, to make uh, you know it useful for you, we have also given you uh, a button which will help you to download it. So you can download this into Excel, and then you can use this data set in your PowerPoint reports. Uh, you know wherever you want to show a comparison report for the stock changes, you can easily do that. So we have given this, and also we have given uh, one more important thing is that once you add that sh that show fund counts. So this actually includes all the fund counts in the you know uh, Excel uh, data set and also the ISIN number. This ISIN number is very useful because if you want to add these stocks into your portfolio in the engine portfolio analytics, you can easily copy these ISINs and add them into the portfolio. So that is the usefulness of this, having the ISIN numbers in the data sets itself. And next we have the equity holdings. So for the equity holdings, uh, what we have given here is that you can either search one stock to see which are the mutual funds holding that stock in a you know in a statistical you know you can you can see all the data sets for one month six months and the one year return here so let's say i'm talking about tata power right so if i search this stock i can see you know 143 funds hold tata power with you know invested value of 3 3065 crores right and i can even filter the you know holding percentage with an ascending and a descending order i can filter it through the yearly returns and that's how i can recognize how many of the funds hold tata power in in uh, as a as a stock in their portfolio and i can even download this table in excel and also we have given a data set here with top 25 stocks held by open ended funds so these are the 25 stocks held by open ended funds within all equity mutual funds and you can even download this in excel all I need to do is if I need to need, if I need to see all the funds for Enfi, all I need to do is click on it. So you can easily click on uh, you know all these uh, you know stocks here to see the data sets here, which is also downloadable in a CSV format. Uh, can be onboarded as Excel, right? So this is one important thing which is very very useful. You can you know once it is downloaded, these are the data sets available. I'm showing you the Excel sheets because this is uh, you know this is where you can use these data sets as your own customized uh, you know reports if you want to make one and uh, another important thing here is that we have also given some other data sets for debt holdings as well so for debt holdings uh, let's say you have already had our rda connection with us right so in a in a use case uh, where uh, you know where we have our you know clients onboarded in the rta connection i would definitely want to know which funds have defaulted Right, which which uh, debt papers have defaulted, and uh, you know if I know that I can search that funds into my RT connection. So I can easily go into the you know funds tab. I can go into the holdings analysis, debt holdings, search for that debt security either by a keyword, just like this. I can search it up, and I can see the ratings here. 
right? So we have given the data sets here with the scheme names which hold this this particular debt securities here, all which is related to Reliance, and the holding percentage, the fund AUM, holdings in crores, one month, six months, and the data data sets goes on and on. You can see till one year, right? So this particular data sets, uh, once you know that if you have some funds which has, uh, you know, some debt papers which are defaulted, you can easily recognize those funds from here. And then you can search it in your clientele, client base. To search that, all you need to do is into go to your client, uh, you know, section, RTA connection and search for that fund. So if you have some bond fund, so you can see that, you know, one or two clients are holding that particular set of bond fund. You search this. Okay, this one client is, you know, holding it. You can easily run the analytics and you can, you know, uh, do the uh, needful for that. So this is how this works out for any particular debt securities, uh, you know, uh, whenever you are searching for a debt holdings. And we have also given, uh, you know, uh, this uh, function where you can search through ISIN. So if you have an ISIN number of any debt security, let's say this one, right? I'm just copying this ISIN right now, right? And uh, this is a uh, this is an ISIN for Reliance Industry. So you paste it her paste it up here. You can see the NCD and the corporate debt, right? Whichever ISIN you're looking towards, you can see this. And these are the funds which holds uh, you know this particular debt paper. So it's it gets pretty easy pretty easy to you know search this uh, debt papers uh, just into this debt holdings altogether. And that is how you can analyze for the same. So I'm just show, showing the process again. In the client section, if you go back into the RTA, right, you can search for any particular fund, any uh, fund like, you know, for an example, another set of uh, credit risk fund. Yeah. So if I search, this is one client which holds the, uh, you know, I approve credit risk fund. And you can see these are the clients I hold. So I can search for one, one client, Shail Chavla, and I can go ahead with it. So this is how this works out uh, for the same. And Another important thing is now we have also started onboarding multiple ARNs. So, you know, uh, talking for that as well, because we can actually have, you know, more than, you know, five, six or multiple sets of ARN in one place. You can consolidate them in one single place. You can see this is a consolidated ARN uh, and you can go for one single ARN as well. So let's say this, this was my previous ARN with this particular set of AUM. You can go for the, you know, the second ARN with this AUM and then there is a, you know, consolidated one. So this is the consolidated one with the entire set of AUM given into the system, which you can actually recognize easily into the system. You can directly click on this system. You can see these are the, you know, uh, ARNs which are onboarded into the system. So we have started with several clients. If you want to onboard multiple ARNs with us, you can easily do that. Uh, you know, you can get in touch with us at support at the rate engine research.com. So I'm just writing the mail right now so that our team can get in touch with you. Uh, once you, you know, request us with the onboarding of the multiple ARN and uh, we will do the net pool. So these are the couple of things for the holdings analysis. I, I wanted to show you on this session. There are a couple of things, uh, you know, we had new updates in our system. So for the updates, I would like to, uh, you know, run through those updates as well, uh, because it might get missed out from, uh, you know, from this session. The updates are that, you know, within asset allocation for any single fund, right? The positions over time now also shows number of shares held in lakhs. Now, this is very important because we have shown you number of shares held in lakhs in the sector changes and in the stock changes here itself, right? You can just click on it and you can see the number of shares held in lakhs. Similarly, you can do it for an individual fund. So for what do I mean that uh, you can just go and search a fund here. Once you search it, you can just go into this asset allocation here. And in the positions over time, we have added this, you know, uh, uh, this toggleable button, which will help you to change it to number of shares held in lakhs. So now, as of now, you can see these are in percentages, right? So, you know, the, the, the shares which are getting, uh, you know, uh, the positions which are changing is in percentages, which can be changed to shares held in lakhs. So that's how this works out. You can either change it by security and also by sector, right? But by sector, we have given only percentages, but, but by security, we have given a number of shares held in lakhs. So this is very, very useful. Downloadable in Excel. You can use this data set as you want, if you want to. And this is one another, you know, functionality as we have added into the system, right? 
uh, we now show benchmark uh, statistics alongside the statistics for the security in the main performance tab as well. This is what we were talking about. This is, you know, the benchmark statistics we have and also the, you know, performance of the funds. So, you know, funds or a portfolio. So, uh, you know, if you have loaded a fund analytics, this will show you the benchmark versus the asset. You can see all the, you know, differences between them. Pretty useful because you can do side by side comparison in one single tab. This is, uh, you know, one thing. And we also have the portfolio comparison tool. Now we have onboarded that in, in the compare section itself. Before what we used to have in the compare, whenever you want to compare, you need to click on this and it gets onboarded here itself, right? But you do not need to go here. All you need to do is you just have to go into the compare and compare portfolios. And even in the compare portfolios, which I'm talking about, you can even add in your RDA clients. Now you do not need to have a list here. All you need to do is search for that, for that client. So let's say I'm talking about Shail Chawla, right? So I can even add Shail Chawla from my RTA, which is from my ARN into my system to compare it. And now if I want to compare my model portfolio, which is already onboarded in my portfolio section, that I can easily do that. So it gets, uh, you know, pretty easy right now to compare any model portfolio against, uh, you know, any client. All you need to do is just search the name of those portfolios. It will directly onboard either via client section, either via portfolio section. Both of them will be pretty seamless, right? So, and then we have the compare securities tab. So the compare section, which we have is, uh, you know, very robust right now, uh, which, uh, you know, actually has this one particular parameter called calculate. Now we have faced this issue that, you know, sometimes when you want to add many securities, like more than 30, 40, so, uh, you know, it takes time to, you know, add all those securities in one place that actually solves up just a second. I'll just load it here. You can back to the compare, you can just, you know, uh, add a list here or, or any particular category in one place. So let's say I'm adding this all 45 uh, securities. So. This is actually saving my time because of, you know, uh, before we used to calculate this relative column, but now you can opt out of it. So it will actually save your time. Uh, you know, why? Because delete funds and add fund pretty faster. And if you want to calculate the relative column here, this is what you will see. You normally you will see this, that these are all, you know, uh, blank. If you want to make a calculation out of it, all you need to do is click calculate. And that's it within a couple of seconds gets added into the system. So that's how this works out for any particular, you know, uh, uh, security add into the system. And you can now change any benchmark, you know, as you have done before. So this is how this works out for the compare securities uh, tab as well. And also we have another very, very important function, which is a desktop share link. Now you can check this out. Your, if your co-branding is done, what you need to do is all you need to do is any portfolio, any portfolio, or either from your RTA or either from, uh, you know, your portfolios and make a share link. So this share link actually is co-branded. Now you can have your own company logo. So, you know, I will just show you how, uh, this particular share link, you can copy this, right. And I'm just going to show the share link in front of you. Now this. Uh, you know, this logo, which we have, uh, you know, given here, this is where your logo will be onboarded. So I hope this is visible to everyone. Uh, and this is where you can, you know, uh, uh, your entire, uh, you can share this with the client and you will see your logo to be shared with the client. And this is actually, uh, you know, kind of very, very dynamic, you know, link, which can be shared with the clients altogether. So a pretty useful function, you know, if you're using this uh, as a, a tool to share it with the clients, pretty useful because we have given all the benchmark functions. You can change the benchmark, print the PDFs, print the PowerPoint in one single place. And we have also, you know, uh, given some security for security purposes, uh, engine markets do log out. Uh, we have a system which uh, gets, uh, you know, uh, the system log out every night so that uh, your security of the data sets is preserved. So that is it. Uh, you know, that is it for the entire updates. Uh, we can start with the Q&A uh, right now. If you have any questions, please uh, start shooting the questions. We will start to answer them.
So are there any questions? When we prepare the portfolio, hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, in that um, um, along with the performance chart, the performance statistics is also given. So that it is showing annual ninety five percent WAR. That's always a minus figure. Uh, how how it is interpreted? Are you getting me? Okay. Okay. Am, am I audible? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The last sure. So it's this annual VAR bit risk. Exactly. Yeah. So I hope I'm audible to you. Yes. So yes. Uh, within uh, yes. So this negative figure actually shows you that there is a five percent probability that this twenty four point. Your, your voice is breaking now. Seven percent. So this is, uh, you know, all about risk. We are talking about. Sir, your voice is breaking. Things are playing the things again. Yeah. Am I audible now? Hello. Yeah. Now audible. Yeah. Sorry for the delay. Yeah. So. Uh, this historical value at risk is, uh, you know, is a uh, is a parameter to gauge the risk of any particular portfolio or an asset, right? So basically, what we do is we take into consideration the daily historical return of any portfolio. We make a confidence interval of ninety five. See, this is a confidence interval. So what it interprets here is that there is a five percent probability or a chance to have a loss of negative twenty four point. Six seven percent for this particular asset, which is our portfolio. Now this probability can be changed. All you need to do is change the probability set like ninety nine. Now this shows you the worst worst set of probability when you can have such a loss uh, for an asset and for the benchmark as well. Now this gives you a comparison that if if such thing happen, if such a scenario happens, you. Our asset can have a loss of negative forty one point six four, whereas the benchmark you can see has the you know higher set of loss. So this is you know calculated on the basis of the historic you know, both the assets, which is our you know uh, portfolio, and works out for the historical value at risk. Whereas if you are talking about implied, implied is just a methodology. It's a Sir, so your your voice is again cracking. The methodology changes. It takes into consideration. Hi, Umair. I think your voice is cracking. Um, uh, the, sorry. The, um, um, yeah. Is there any problem? Connection problem at your end? Yeah. Yeah. So if. Okay, I think um, he's just gone off uh, for a bit. Um, okay, so we were talking about historical implied wall. Um, uh, okay, was there, a, sorry, I, I just joined late. Was there a question uh, here at all uh, that, I'm, uh, that I'm answering? Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, yes, so uh, were you asking the difference between historical and implied volatility? Is that right? Yeah, yes, yes. yes. Okay, uh, a VAR, right. Okay, so VAR, just, just to start off, um, VAR obviously is value at risk as Umair was explaining. Now, value at risk means um, effectively if you um, um, you know you can hover over the question mark and see also, but basically it means the uh, amount of loss that has a X percent chance of happening, and X is defined by the number you put in there. We'll come back to that later, but let's just say X is a small number like one or two or three, four, five. So uh, basically, it's trying to tell you what is the worst case scenario, kind of right. Um, so. In this case, because we put 99 in that box, X becomes one. It's just 100 minus that number. So uh, there is a 1% chance that this uh, portfolio could lose, um, you know, 41%, uh, 41.64%. 41 
Um, now, how is this calculated? This basically looks at the historical daily returns, right? Every single day. And basically creates a uh, kind of like a percentile writing, just like we sometimes do on, um, you know, uh, in question um, uh, exam papers. Uh, so this is basically uh, figuring out the 99th percentile, right? So the, uh, but the reverse way, so the worst 1% um, point, and then showing you what that would mean. So if you were really unlucky, 1% of the time, um, you would lose 41%. Now, if you did use the... This is on an annual basis? Yes, sir. This is an annual basis. Okay, fine. And when we look at uh, VAR, value at risk is a pretty complex subject in finance. Now, the, we've uh, given you two methods here. There are many others, uh, many other VAR models. We've given you two straightforward ones which are used uh, quite uh, you know, widely in the industry. One is historical, which I just explained. It basically looks at the percentile. Um, and so it's using probably, uh, basically probability to calculate that. The second one is called implied VAR, which generally speaking will be reasonably close by. Um, and here, but it will be slightly different uh, always. Um, and here we've changed it to 5% uh, confidence level, which is why we have 95. And you can see the loss is 25.21% annual basis. Now, how is that calculated? That is actually calculated using the standard deviation, which is 15.33 up there, right? Uh, annual volatility. So it looks at that and uses the normal distribution to imply that number back. Um, so this is a, a number that has been calculated using the standard deviation. Um, so using the volatility of the portfolio's back test, which is back uh, on the left side uh, on the blue chart, it's, it's basically forecasting what your um, you know, loss could be uh, at a 5% probability. Um, so in both cases, um, you know, uh, it is showing you uh, a kind of a bad, bad luck scenario for this portfolio. And even in that bad luck, you're down 24-25%. Technically, there is no real reason to explain to a general client the difference between historical and implied other than the simple explanation that one is based on returns, the other one is based on volatility. Um, only, I think, you know, finance academics will probably go into this question. So um, generally speaking, um, you can use any one of them. Uh, on the reports, we usually... Um, uh, print the historical. Um, if we were doing questions, uh, uh, are there any more questions from anyone? So there's another question, uh, which uh, uh, by Anshul Srivastav. Is there any way we can see historical debt uh, equity percentage for balance advantage fund? Okay, so we do show uh, historical uh, asset allocation. Uh, however, in uh, for what you're asking partic uh, particularly. Um, Umair, if you can hear me, just please load any mutual fund. And here you can see the history of um, the holdings of um, any fund. Um, we don't show them as equity and debt uh, total. I mean, we could probably uh, you know, do something like that. Um, yeah, let's get a balanced advantage. And then let's go to positions over time. So here, as you can see, um, you know we can show you either by security, um, that's in the individual stocks, etc., or you can see it by sector. Uh, but we don't show it by equity or debt. Uh, but that um, I, I think that could be pretty useful. Um, so Umair, maybe let's write it down on list of improvements. We could probably show a chart over time um, showing the equity versus. Um, you know, debt evolution over time, since we already have the sure. data. Is there any, um, anyone else would like to ask questions either about holding analysis or, or anything else? I would like to know where we can see the SIP returns for any particular scheme. 
Sure. So we have a tool. Um, um, you can just go to the tool section here where you can run an individual SIP for a fund. Um, if you want, you can do it on a stock and index also. But here you can see by default, uh, it's just loading SBS small cap. And um, you, know, you can put your installment start and end date. And then you can get all the details here. Um, you will see a chart of the evolution of the SIP. You can um, you know, uh, print a couple of reports. One is a one pager, which basically puts all this information in a neat format in a PDF, which will be co-branded uh, co with your um, logo uh, on the left side. Um, and so it'll have you know, just a one pager on a single fund SIP. And you can obviously put whatever monthly installment start end date uh, you want to. Um, and uh, if you want, you can pay, uh, print a detailed one, which will also have the table, basically, of how the money has grown, uh, invested and grown. So here, if you scroll down, I mean, depending on how long an SIP you run, it will be it can be multiple pages. Will it give the benchmark figures also along with it? Um, so in this particular report, there are the, the benchmark figures are not there. It's just an SIP on anything, basically. But um, uh, we don't put the benchmark alongside here, especially because you're running an SIP. Um, you can easily print, uh, if you want to, just for the sake of showing something, you can pick a benchmark from here and run it separately. And you'll be able to print out that um, as a separate page. So this is a Nifty TRI index or whatever you want to print. Um, uh, and you can you know, print it separately. It's not in the same, um, same report. Okay. And finally, we also have a little chart on the right-hand side. It might or may not be useful, but here you can see what the final result would have been if you had started the SIP on different dates of the month instead of what you've got on there. And you can just click on that bar and it will load that date. So if you click 25th, now it's showing you a SIP starting on 25th. Um, so yeah, that, that you, you can check SIPs in this way. Another place where you can check comparative SIPs, you can go to the compare section. If you have a bunch of funds in there, like we do, you can just go to the monthly SIP tab um, and you can run uh, SIPs from any installment, any start to end date, monthly SIP. Um, and um, you can see the result XR and final value for each of them in one place. And you can download this in Excel, et cetera. By the way, in the compare section, um, uh, uh, hopefully you know, you can add a few funds and an index or whatever else in the same Place, right um, so you can kind of uh, do some of that analysis here as well thank you so here you can see you know we got nifty 50 right there um, alongside um, uh, someone's asked a question on the chat saying do we have a comparison against the crystal index uh, uh, no, we, we'd love to do it, but Crystal, unfortunately, is a private company. They do not share their data with platforms like ours. Um, so we have added quite a few indices from NSC and BSC, which are publicly available. Crystal, unfortunately, currently something that we are, uh, we can get the data, but we're not, um, we're not allowed to um, use it on our platform. Um, um, and uh, another question is for an index, how to compare against a benchmark? Mm -hmm. That's pretty straightforward. There are many different ways, but let, we'll just show you a couple of them. Uh, Omer, just remove everything and then add a fund and one benchmark. So one thing you can do is you can come to the compare section. Um, uh, um, so you can, let's add one fund and let's add a couple of benchmarks. So here you can uh, put uh, one fund if you want, um, put an index, um, and then you can put, you know, you know, a couple more indices here if you want. Um, and you can have all indices if you like. You can put a stock here also if you like. Um, and once you've done that, then there's various different ways in which you can compare it. And obviously all the tabs are here. Um, so that's one way you can do it. Um, and the other way is obviously if you have a fund, you will always get a lot of statistics against the benchmark. Um, so you're referring to debt passive funds. So yeah, you can load um, um, any fund here. So if you give us a name, we can load it in here and you can put another index next to it. Um, so any any kind of comparison is possible in this section. Um, or if you want to look at a debt fund versus its benchmark, you can just load the fund as well and you'll get much more detailed analysis as well. So we just, okay, we're just adding a money market fund. There it is. And if you just load the money market fund, for example, 
Um, okay, take any guilt 2026. <laughs> May let's just do that. Um, just let's see, guilt 2026 something. Yeah, let's pick any. Okay. Um, so there it goes. It's been added. Um, um, yeah. So you can add as many as you like. Uh, you can add the entire category also if you want in one go. Um, the guild category if you want. Uh, and once you've done that, you know, you can do rolling analysis. You, know, you can look at the years. You can do risk versus return to see what their you know, profile looks like um, on, this, uh, on this view. Um, you can do correlation analysis to compare them versus each other. Uh, you can look at a simple performance chart, right? Um, you know, point to point analysis, all of that stuff. I mean, there must be a fund here, which is very new. Yeah. Uh, so these are very, very recent. Um, so that's why we re reduce them um, from here. But yeah, so you can do a performance chart, all of this stuff is possible. And if you just load a guilt fund from the top also, you can compare it with its benchmark also. Um, So there we go, we have a, we have a good funding. And, and um, Umair, just click ICICI approved guild fund, just let it load in a new page. So if you want, you can pitch it against any benchmark you want. Um, and then, you know, on the right hand side, you can see asset and benchmark. You can see both uh, statistics as well. Um, so we, uh, we don't have anywhere we, where you can compare sector allocations, but you can look at sector allocations very easily in the asset allocation sector. Um, uh, so, you know, that's very easily done. And may I just load any equity fund, please? So obviously you can look at a single equity fund and you can check out the, um, sector allocations here. Um, like that. Um, so if you want to actually see these side by side, um, the, uh, you know, we currently don't have anything to do that. Um, uh, in the compare section, you can look at holdings analysis, how much is in small cap, large cap, et cetera. Those things are possible, but sector exposures um, side by side for many funds isn't possible currently on the platform. We have any more questions? Yes, sir, I have a question. Sure. Uh, sir, can you explain about the calculate option in compass section, sir? Um, yeah. Oh, this one. Okay, so yes. uh, yeah, we turn this off. So basically, just to make it clear, uh, you can see there are some green columns, then there are some pink columns, and then there are some blue columns. So on the top, we have options for each of these, right? The return columns are always shown, uh, which are the green columns, right? So may I just um, yeah, scroll left here. So these columns will always come, whatever you add, fund, index, whatever you add, right? Um, the blue columns, which are far, far out on the right, they will also always come. If it's a fund, you will see holdings. If it's an index or something else, you won't see any, right? So that's that. Now in the middle, the pink columns, right? Uh, this middle uh, square that you have um, uh, on the top of it, where, where the options are, right? Yeah, this square, this entire square is, is giving you options for the pink columns only. Now these pink columns are relative columns, which means it will show you performance of each of these items in the compare section versus one index, right? Which you can select here. So in this case, it's just one index, fine. Now, when you, by default, the calculate option is switched off. Why? Because when you have quite a lot of funds in your comparison list, it takes a lot of time. Um, so we keep it switched off in case you're only, uh, you know, interested in the green columns. But if you click it on, then, these columns will be calculated like that. 
right? And you'll always see them. So if you keep it on, that's fine. You can keep doing your work. But every time you add a new fund uh, or take anything out, um, it will recalculate these columns. So to save time, it is switched off. Uh, but when you click that button, it means that the pink columns are switched on. Um, yeah, yeah, in terms of sector spread for comparison, yes, that's a, uh, uh, we will definitely look into that. Uh, I will try to kind of include it somehow. Maybe in this section, uh, it may not be possible in this section because this doesn't really have a limit on the number of funds you can put. Um, so we'll have to think of a way to kind of, uh, you know, maybe develop a separate tool um, uh, somewhere else in the application to do that. Um, uh, yeah. Hey, sir. Uh, what is the purpose of come access option and then annual access? What is the difference? Sure. So come access is just a short form for cumulative access because we don't have enough place on the header. So that means, so you can just hover over that and say it's a cumulative access return above the benchmark, which means total over the entire period, right? Okay. Annualize is just the annualization of that number. So typically people always look at the annual line. Okay. okay sir. Thank you. Sure. Um, and just, um, uh, just for Mr. Ravi Natarajan, so we, we've noted this down. We will try to um, figure out a way to kind of show this. We obviously have the data. That's not an issue. Um, uh, and if you uh, if you would like to do this yourself, for example, if you have, um, we, we can make your life a little bit easier. If you have um, uh, you know, uh, a few funds in this list, you can go to bulk download. Uh, what it will do is it'll give you a big Excel um, like that. You can see the screenshot here. Um, and here you'll see, uh, you know, the, the, the the holdings for every fund in your list. Uh, now here we won't get much because we've only got one fund. Um, but uh, what we can do is we can add the sector column here. So at least for the time being, you'll have something where you can um, you know, do some comparisons. But we'll of course we'll try to develop something. But if you had ten funds here, all ten funds and loading uh, holdings will be downloaded in one click. Okay. Yes, sir. Crystal um, is not really in our hands. Sir. Crystal is, like I said, a private company and they have to agree to give us the data and they are not agreeing. So um, that's the issue. They, you know, um, and Crystal data is available, but it's not available to us because we are a platform. And in some sense, because they also have research available, um, we have become, um, you know, in some sense, a competitor. Uh, Cecil Bond index rolling returns, yes, it's very easy. Um, I may just clear the list, add Cecil Bond index to the list, and um, you know, uh, we'll just show you. Clear the list, add Cecil Bond index, and then you go to rolling. And here you have it. You, you can do distribution, you can do whatever you want. Here. And you can change the rolling window, calculation methodologies, everything. And you can check Cecil Bond rolling versus something else if you want. Even if you have your own data, which is not on the platform, you can upload it as a custom security and add it here. Are there any more questions? If there's nothing else further, um, one message. Okay, great. Um, yeah, Omer, we can go ahead and close it now. Sure. Uh, so thank you so much, everyone, uh, uh, for attending this session. Um, yeah, we have got another, you know, uh, message, uh, Arunab sir, commercial, please. So I think, uh, you know, Ravi sir, we will get in touch with you uh, so that, uh, you know, one of our business team uh, will, uh, you know, uh, give you the entire details regarding this. Okay. Uh, 
secondly uh, thank you everyone uh, you know uh, for attending this session uh, we will be coming again next week with uh, different topics uh, with new updates as well uh, some interesting updates so thank you all have a nice weekend and happy diwali for everyone thank you